All right, so everyone, welcome to today's webinar. It's me, Craig Grant, CEO of RETI. I'd like to welcome um, a couple of our buddies here from ByProxy. We got Nick Espinoza and Patrick Frank. Say hi, guys. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Hey, good. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know about ByProxy, we'll get into their whole entire company and what they do in a minute. Um, but before we do so, let me just kind of quickly kind of give you the RETI spiel. Um, as you guys know, we do these webinars every single week as our way to give back to the industry. Um, so check out every single Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern, we do these webinars with different vendors in the industry and different cool topics to help you guys learn about tech and marketing. Um, and our hope is you'll go, of course, go check out the RITI site if you're not a member yet, because uh, we have thousands of instructional videos and product reviews and webinars like we're doing today. So that being said, you guys aren't here to hear the sales pitch at RITI. We're here to learn about active uh, versus reactive marketing, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, but before we do that, why don't we just kind of talk a little bit um, with both Patrick and Nick and just talk to them. Give us a little bit of information first about uh, you, who you guys are and what your roles are at by proxy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll kick it off. My name is Patrick Frank. I'm the head of sales here at by proxy. Um, you know, really what my core focus is, is generating revenue for the company. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as we'll talk about a little bit later uh, in this in this webinar, you know, we, we're doing that in several different ways um, through empowering brokers. Um, a little bit about my background. I was one of the first employees for Compass, which is a residential real estate brokerage yep. um, in Southern California um, and was responsible for growing out their um, exposure all across San Diego, Palm Desert, Palm Springs, uh, Orange County, all of those areas. Mm -hmm. um, and bringing their their business to market. Okay, great. When that's pretty fast growing company, that's a pretty good <laughs> yeah, job. <laughs> and, and how about I'm you, Nick? I'm Nick Espinosa. I'm the head of client relations over here at ByProxy. Uh, mainly, my focus is you know what we're doing here at ByProxy is something that's a little bit new and a different approach. Mm -hmm. So basically, maintaining those relationships with brokers, making sure they get a full understanding of what what we offer and the technology that we're using. Um, and basically helping them close more deals. So that's, you know, kind of my role within the company. My background, I started off in, on the East Coast in private equity, um, investing in all sorts of different property sectors. So that kind of, you know, built my knowledge base of the commercial real estate industry. Yep. Um, from there, I kind of dabbled in the, the, you know, startup world for a little bit, ultimately missed the commercial real estate side of things and ended up going to work for Shopcore Properties, which is Blackstone Group's retail investment group. Um, over there, I helped them build out kind of a national short-term lease program, which is helping online businesses convert to brick and mortar and expand their presence. And, and Very you're cool. out by proxy. Yeah, yeah. And, and in a horrible place. We were joking, like, with me being in South Florida, you guys being in San Diego, we, we, everyone on the webinar is probably a little bit uh, jealous right. of us with the weather right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been moving out here to either one of them, right? It's a good thing we're, we're both involved in real estate, right? So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You get to pick your location. That's how it works, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about By Proxy? Because I know you guys are a little bit new on the scene. I know you guys have been kind of building up, um, but tell us a little bit about By Proxy before we get into the whole active versus reactive. Yeah, absolutely. So By Proxy is, is as you mentioned, one of the newest uh, newest players in the commercial real estate tech space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just closed in on a $10 million Series A round a little under six months ago, um, and we've been really going to market ever since. Um, what we are truly is a, is a platform built for commercial real estate mm -hmm. that empowers brokers. Yeah. Um, you know, historically, and, and speaking to our management team, they have worked um, as brokers, they were some of the initial founding members of 10X. Um, and, you know, really what they found was, is that there really is no platform in commercial real estate that is core focus is empowering brokers to sell more. Um, and we'll definitely talk a, a, a lot about that and how we're, we're changing, um, kind of changing the perspective there in, in the industry. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing that caught my eye when I met you guys at any of our conferences there really isn't, first of all, there's not a whole lot of vendor service in commercial. It's kind of always a little bit of the stepchild of the industry where, you know, the majority of the vendors go towards the residential side, but I really right. liked the way you guys were kind of kind of packaging everything and, and really giving the brokers in the commercial space kind of a full pat, full solution. I mean, which right. you really don't see much of. Cool. Um, all right. So, um, I know we're, we have people on the webinar that aren't just commercial. You know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of our people are doing either residential or both sides, um, which is why when we were talking about doing a topic, one that 
you know, it was kind of in your guys' wheelhouse really interested me is what we're going to talk about today, which is the active versus reactive marketing. Um, mm-hmm. And we joked about it when we were talking the other day. I, you know, I have a huge marketing background. I used to work for the New York Times on the digital side, and I teach a lot about marketing all the way up to today. Um, and I'd always just use different terminology for it. I always been more of a mass marketing versus, you know, data marketing, which is really what modern marketing is. Um, but why don't you kind of first, just for the group, to define for them what really is the reactive versus the active marketing? Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, this is such an interesting topic to talk about, because it doesn't matter whether you're in residential or commercial, or even taking a step back from from real estate altogether. This is a topic that's extremely relevant, um, and everybody has experience with. Um, So I think, you know, before we kind of go in and have that discussion, it's really important to define, you know, what is reactive versus what is active marketing. Right. Um, And so obviously, you know, you have some experience on the marketing side and there's, you know, Patrick and I are by no means digital marketing specialists. We have our in-house team for that. Um, But what we refer to reactive marketing at ByProxy is basically your traditional sense of marketing. Um, You know, examples of this are print advertising, um, Mm -hmm. outdoor advertising and broadcasting. Uh, you know, these are things where companies are taking their message and they're broadcasting it on a large scale and yep. hoping that consumers react to their message. Um, yep. Another way in which it's reactive is that brands have to react to how their, their you know, the competition is marketing their product and they have to do the same. Right. Um, so that's, you know, defining reactive. What we call react or excuse me, what we call active here at ByProxy is, is modern day marketing. So, you know, some of those tools, you know, and these are all the buzzwords that you hear out there. Um, you know, we're talking targeted email campaigns, SEO optimization, social media, and, and influencer marketing. Those are sort of the terms that you're hearing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a completely different approach. And, and in these forms of advertising, what brands are doing is activating their marketing campaigns, you know, by, by adding on and layering data in order to target folks and make sure that they're ultimately reaching the end consumer in the most effective way possible. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really, in my opinion, it's, it's using data in a smart way so that way you're not just wasting your money like what i again what you guys are calling the reactive marketing was what i always called mass marketing which is really a waste of money i mean the example i always give is you I mean if you're buying buying an ad in a newspaper and they have a circulation of fifty thousand, you're wasting your money on forty nine thousand and change like very few people even seeing the paper that day care about your ad right i mean right. Whereas, and alone, I mean, thinking about what happens after that, it's not even just the impressions, right? It's how are you measuring mm-hmm. ROI of that investment and yep. where is the return on it? There are no metrics around that, right? Right. And really, that's why marketing is always the first to get their budget cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But I mean, anyone who does, I mean, there's the old, you got to spend money to make money, right? right, right. I mean, marketing is a necessity. You have to have it, but it's about smart marketing these days. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and by the way, before we get into you, I know you guys have a little presentation you're going to share with us. Um, when, what you, what are you guys seeing? Cause I know you're kind of at the cutting edge of doing this kind of active marketing and the commercial side. Like, why don't you kind of give us like, what's been the landscape of commercial marketing before by proxy and then what you guys are doing a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're looking at commercial, commercial real estate as a whole and the way that it has really operated for the past 20 to 30 years. Right. Mm-hmm. And we ask this to brokers every single day is, is, you know, it's a simple question. What has changed? Right. And there's a typically a very long pause. <laughs> um, and <it's> really, <laughs> you know, thinking about it, you kind of can list it out on, on a one hand, right? right. You call in your database, mm-hmm. you email your database, and you put a listing on a listing site. Right. That is truly the three things that have been being done in commercial real estate for the past 20 or 30 years with little to no change whatsoever. And there have been some ways that people have been getting creative about it, right? They've been doing, some folks have been doing video um, OMs, which we'll talk about how we can produce those as well. Some folks have been utilizing their social media a little bit more, but at the end of the day, that truly is more of that broadcasting aspect of reactive Mm -hmm. marketing. Um, And look, like if nobody ever changed anything about what they were doing, I mean, with all the tools now that are available just in general with your own personal life and how you can broadcast yourself in your business, um, that'd be a shame. But no, again, there has been that little adoption moving forward, but truly the landscape of commercial real estate and how they're marketing assets has not changed over the past 20 to 30 years. Agreed. Yeah. And and it's, it's crazy because it's absolutely evolved a lot over the last decade on the residential side, but 
every time I look at the commercial side, it's it's stasis. It's really basically the same thing they've been doing for a long time. And, right. And I can speak to that, you know, a, a being at Compass, I mean, they truly were a brokerage that, were, that was tech forward and marketing mm -hmm. forward and really focused and changed the mentality of, of real estate agents to that to that perspective, right? To focus on ROI on marketing dollars. Um, and you're absolutely right. In residential, there has been a plethora of different marketing services, different technologies that have come out. Um, and, and truly, I think that is, is because residential is more consumer facing, right? Yeah. It, it's a mm -hmm. little bit sexier if we think about it. Yeah, where, you know, it's it's emotional, emotional purchase. Um, and it's consumer facing, right? Whereas yeah. commercial real estate, we're dealing with investments, we're dealing with numbers, and we're dealing with, you know, kind of, the cut and dry aspects of, of making those um, decisions. Yep, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, well, I think, I, I know I know of a little bit of understanding now on um, the active versus reactive and just kind of what you guys are doing. So why don't we kind of give you guys control? Um, I know you have that slide deck you want to kind of share with us to kind of really dig into this whole active versus reactive. Yeah, guys. So um, again, this is, this is kind of the, the deck we prepared um, to, to really kind of showcase a little bit more about and dive more in detail into the, really the subject of the reactive versus active marketing and, and how, we're, how we're addressing that in the commercial space. Mm -hmm. um, so by proxy, really our tagline is, is commercial real estate for the modern world. Yeah. Um, to walk you through. Um, what Kicking or screaming, you'll get them there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. We're trying our best. Yeah. Um, to, to really walk through what we're going to be talking about is really that modern marketing approach, um, the reactive versus active, uh, talk a little bit more in depth about the current landscape of commercial real estate, dive into what we are, what we're calling marketing concierge, um, mm -hmm. and then show truly what a platform should be for brokers. Okay, great. Yeah, and so just to kind of touch base on, you know, this kind of goes back to the conversation that we had before. This is really an illustration of showing you what marketing, reactive marketing versus what kind of active marketing looks today. Um, and, and really, you know, why this shift has occurred, you know, what's more importantly, you know, what's more important to look at is how technology has evolved the landscape, yep. uh, excuse me, the landscape and shifted consumer attention. Um, you know, from where, you know, back in the day when, billboards were effective, television advertising, print, you know, there were only so many ways you could broadcast and get your message out there. You mm -hmm. kind of think back to the Mad Men area, um, because that's when those are the folks that had control over broadcasting the message. And really what's shifted is, you know, the development of, you know, the internet, the so, you know, social media, and, you know, the smartphone, because it's completely shifted where consumer attention is. And so now what we're seeing is that, you know, now it's people can broadcast for free. There's no longer, you know, there's no longer a barrier to entry to broadcasting. Right. So brands have to compete with all the, you know, the content that's being created, generated, and you know, broadcast by people. And so, in order for their message to get out, they now have to target the folks, make sure that their marketing is relevant, creative, and targeted. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so that's kind of, in a sense, what this picture is showing. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've done basically the same thing for commercial assets, Got it. Um, you know, and, and, and to kind of dive into it, make this a very real, to paint a realistic picture around this image that you're seeing mm -hmm. is that let's take the perfect scenario of the TV advertising or the newspaper that we talked about earlier. Right. On the left hand side, the marketing then, you'll see that it starts out with, you know, a ton of people. Your right. newspaper is going out to a ton of people. So a lot of people are watching that TV advertisement. And then there's some people who kind of go, oh, that's interesting or read about it. And there's some people that go, oh, okay, yeah, and then they forget. And then, another, and then there you have a little bit more stickiness with some folks. And then you end up with two, right? Yeah. You end up with a very small <laughs> portion of who you actually broadcast it out to. And yep. you probably spent an arm and a leg and a fortune to get those two people. Agreed. Yep. Now, let's think about what it looks like today. Right. There are, you know, we're all familiar with our Instagram influencers of the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And let's take those two people at the very top of marketing. Now, imagine if those two people that you got to to endorse your product. And I'm going to be wild here and say this. One mm -hmm. of them is Kim Kardashian and the other one is Jamie Dimon. Right. The right. CEO of, of Chase. And if those two people endorsed your product, all of a sudden you now have those five people now interested in, and probably more like 500,000 to 5 yeah. million. <laughs> if it's those two, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so really, it, it, is, it is really thinking about you can target down to an influential message and the more focused you are on your marketing efforts, the mm -hmm. more return you're actually going to get. Yep. Yeah. And another way that I always kind of talk about it as well is the shift from this whole active versus reactive and the mass marketing is like when you look at it over time, like there's a stat I always give of in 1974, the average U.S. citizen only saw 500 marketing messages a day. Now it's over 35,000 a day, right? right. Yep. And like when I went to marketing school during the 90s, the adage, the whole entire time I was going through college was you had to reach a consumer 3.8 times before they remember you. Now it's 28. Right. So yep. it's like the amount of marketing, the amount of exposure it's you can't do the mass marketing anymore because people are just so inundated. They right. really pay attention to influencers and their friends more than anything. Oh yeah. There, yeah. There's so much overstimulation. You really have to find a way to target and cut through all the noise to really. Yep. It. Absolutely. Great. Okay. So, so I want to kind of talk about again and dive more in depth into the landscape of commercial real estate and also residential. Mm -hmm. Look at this image, right? Yeah, It's crazy. There are, there's probably a hundred different services out there platforms, services, technologies out there that service the real estate industry. Yep. There's no doubt about it that real estate tech is one of the hottest areas of not only attracting investment, but also mm -hmm. in terms of being in the front pages of the news yep. and, and something that is very, is very sexy from a consumer standpoint right now. But what, you know, speaking to the noise, this slide has a lot of noise, right? Yeah. There's a lot of noise out there <laughs> in what you can use, right? And to what would actually benefit your business. And as a broker, how in the world do you have the time to go through every single one of these products, services, mm -hmm. or platforms and decide, hey, this is what's actually going to be good for my business. Yep. And probably considering the fact that all of them are pitching the exact same thing. Yes. Right? And, and by the way, for everyone on the webinar, it's from the residential side this slide would be exponentially more than this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, could, like the it, amount of vendors is crazy. It's unbelievable. Yep. And, and, and that's something where we, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later. I know I keep saying that, but you know, is one of the largest pain points that we've talked through with brokers around the time, energy, and resources it takes to establish true, credible, and reliable vendors for mm -hmm. your business. Right. So we wanted to introduce really what we're calling marketing concierge. And, and what this is, is exactly what we've been talking about in terms of the active marketing, mm -hmm. right? What we found, and again, our founding team being brokers historically and, and now being where we are is that, you know, we think about how all these other industries have changed and now targeting specific uh, assets and matching them with specific buyers. It has happened with literally every single thing out there. It has happened with cars. It has happened mm -hmm. with houses. It has happened with crowdfunding. It has happened with everything. Absolutely. And so we had to sit back and ask, why hasn't happened with commercial assets? The same way that one person could be thinking about buying a new car is the same way that another person could be thinking about buying a new retail portfolio. Right. And so truly to just dive in and make it simple as to what, what marketing concierge is, is that we, we basically empower a broker to get not only just significantly more reach, but a very targeted reach, and for them not to have to spend the time, energy, or resources to have to go learn how to do all of that, and to be the, look, we're not all gonna sit here and say, we are the best marketer on the face of the planet. I would much rather rely on somebody else to be able to do that, who has been making it their discipline and focus for the past right. 20, 30 years. Right, and you have that on your team. It's not so much you're going outside for it, <laughs> exactly. And so yeah, yeah. we have truly an amazing team here at Byproxy in terms of their marketing backgrounds, their digital marketing focus. I mean, it truly is a, a full suite, not only just approaching it from an SEO optimization standpoint, but from a targeting, retargeting, geotarget, I mean, every single type of targeting, just background and discipline that you can imagine. Yes. Which is truly what it takes to it, what it requires to sell something that is two to ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So what what this slide really shows you is kind of you know what the process looks like when somebody says I want to you know I want to enroll my property in marketing concierge and push push it out to the world. Um, so basically, what we do is we we pair that broker up with our in in house marketing team 
and they're building out a full blown digital marketing campaign for the brokers listing. So what this slide is an example of the types of things that they're pushing out to the world. Um, you know, we're trying to get that listing in, in front of buyers, however mm -hmm. possible through all the forms of, you know, whether it be social media, email, all the different platforms that they're currently using and where their attention is. And so, you know, this slide is really an example of the types of tools that our team is able to put together, do that entire lift and specialize in. Mm -hmm. And the broker that we work with, they're able to tap into a completely new buyer pool. And on top of these campaigns, we're layering in the data where we have, you know, owners of like kind properties. We have, you know, just in time buyers, which are like the 1031 exchange buyers who are mm -hmm. coming up on an exchange and need to deploy capital um, and other high net worth investors. So if we can get these, these campaigns into those in, into the hands of those individuals at the right time, they're highly more likely to purchase a property. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, um, before you kind of go back to that slide for a second, if you could, yeah. um, I know what it is, but for anyone on the webinar, can you guys quickly explain retargeting? Yep, absolutely. So we think about retargeting, right? What it truly is, is let's say someone who, and I'll try to paint it into a broker's perspective. Imagine if there is a world where you could see every single person who came to go view your listing on CoStar, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or a Crexy or whatever other listing site there is out there. And then you could essentially attach something to them and follow them digitally, right. of course, right? Yep. <laughs> um, and it's the same kind of concept of I'm sure everyone who's listening to this, this webinar has been out there and had a conversation with someone, right? Let's say you were saying, oh, I really need to take a vacation. I need to go to Costa Rica, or maybe I need to go to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're seeing ads for airfare to Hawaii, hotels in Hawaii. Yep. And then maybe you click on one of those. And that, that airfare was for Hawaiian airlines. Hawaiian airlines can now retarget you across all of your mediums right? Whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Google, whether yep. you're on Instagram, whether you're on Twitter, it does not matter. They can find a way to get right in front of you. They essentially attach, attach a, oh goodness, um, I'm forgetting the name of it right now. It's either a, pic uh, it's it's either a pixel or a cookie, <laughs> whichever one it is. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll work as a team on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so really they attach a pixel or a cookie to you and mm -hmm. essentially they can then follow you. Um, yep. And this is why you always feel like, you know, gosh, how is it they know exactly what I'm thinking about or even just talking about? This is how we do that. Exactly. And so we can, we can do that for high net worth individuals, right in time buyers, um, all of those folks and those targets that we have essentially run through with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just something where, look, we work with some amazing brokers across the nation. The reality is, is that you as a broker are so good at what you do, selling the asset, learning the market and, and helping out your clients. You should not have to go and learn all of this, learn all the technical background and discipline of it. And really it should be something that says, Hey, I want to make sure that I'm working with professionals that are going to be able to do this for me and sell it and help me sell this asset. Yeah. And, and speaking about, you know, how much time, energy and resources go into that. I mean, having to go through and sift through the data is, I mean, we can relate this back to how long does it take uh, you as a broker to go and pull comparables for, right. for assets. If you yep. go buy a house, you want to know how much all the other houses in the neighborhood sold for. Same thing if you're selling a commercial asset. And um, let's translate that to the marketing side. Imagine how complex, and if we're talking about all these different kinds of targeting campaigns, how complex the actual data set is and focusing is, hey, what was the right technique or right audience or right positioning that we had to use to attract and get the most conversions? So that is what our team is consistently doing twice a week on every asset running through the program. We are learning every single day how to better focus these campaigns and then mm -hmm. convert buyers. Got it. Yep. And data um, analyzation is so, so valuable. One kind of thing we want to talk about here, and, and this is tying back into the landscape. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. And, uh, and, and truly, you know, as you're saying, is that being able to evaluate that is, is how you get and how you learn um, to, to acquire those buyers. Right. Um, just, just one more note on this is, is to really think about empowering brokers. If we think about all the services out there and all, all the noise out there, it's all one simple model. 
It's all subscription based, right? Mm -hmm. And if we think about this, this is a picture perfect reactive versus active in that in a reactive world, you sit back and you subscribe to something and hope that it does well for you. In an active world, imagine a world where you weren't paying a subscription and you paid on performance, right? We are the right. exact same way. We feel and we know the pain of, of working for your clients and not being paid till you actually deliver results by proxy is the exact same way. And we'll, we'll dive a little bit more into that at the very end here. Um, but just to give an overview of, of truly how we encompass all of this into a platform, um, starting off, let's imagine a world where you as a broker, you just acquire an asset, um, you get, you win the listing and you have to go to market. How many different things do you have to line up in order to bring that asset to market? Well, right. let's think about it. You have your photography, you got drone photography, maybe you got floor plans, you have your OM, you have your comparables, you have your broker opinion of value. You have probably 10 other things that I'm not even listing off right now. Right. And then sit back and ask, how do you source all of those? Who's sourcing them and how much time are you spending on sourcing every single one of those vendors? Mm -hmm. And are they the best quality? Are they the cheapest price? And there's all these questions that you have to ask. And even to layer one more thing on top of that, if you have a team, and as a lot of brokers do, what happens if someone leaves and you add, or if you add someone to your team, can you create a repeatable process? So this is exactly what we've done with the buy proxy shop, which is essentially e-commerce for real estate. All of those things that I listed and more, you can go on and check out with one simple click. The okay. amount of time that brokers are saving from doing this, the amount of money that they're saving from doing this is truly, truly, in, is, is, it's incredible. Um, and this is something where I've seen throughout any other industry is that if we can reduce the amount of time, effort, and resources that we're spending on the things that we don't want to be spending on and just focus on spending time with our clients, you will make more. Um, so creating that repeatable process. Mm -hmm. um, once those assets are up and running, you can run your asset through marketing concierge um, and really kind of iron tight and focus in on who those potential buyers are and, and hopefully get some more conversions. Um, but you know, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is, is that reactive side, which look is, is something that we all, as much as we've talked so negatively about is something that is also needed, um, in the commercial space right now, you need a place to be able to put your listing. You need a place to be able to showcase it to the world. The difference is, is that we are not charging brokers for it to have your listing, have it up on the market. You do not have to pay a subscription fee to have your asset showcased for the world. That's awesome. Now, now, how are you getting that listing data? Does the broker have to actually go and manually input or are you guys getting feeds of that? So that's, that's really where we're integrating into brokers process. And so our whole goal is to have relationships with brokers. And so when they get a listing, you know, we're the one spot where they can go and upload their listing information knowing that they can put it up on a reactive way and get lots of traffic, knowing that if they want to take their listing a step further and start, you know, try marketing concierge and activate, you know, activate their listing in, a, in an active marketing way, we have something there for them as well. And also if it's just, if it's a place where we can make it as easy as possible for the broker, you know, we strive off being the most broker friendly platform. Yeah. And so if we can integrate into the process and become that, you know, we hope to catch them early enough to where we can offer them anything they need. Cool. Now, quick question. Does somebody need to be a by proxy customer to be able to put their listing onto the platform? No, they do not. So we brokers, whether it's for sale, for lease, can put their assets up onto um, the listing platform absolutely free. That's awesome. And it is, you know, it's something that is needed, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, no doubt. as the industry has as evolved, it's not, there's not one day that goes by that I don't hear about a price increase on a subscription that I think everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we need to stop. I mean, the amount of work, effort and resources and, you know, speaking to all brokers here is that the amount of effort resources that go into winning the listing and then having to really be, you know, your margins cut in so deeply on just putting that listing somewhere is, mm -hmm. is just, it's not the model anymore. Oh, absolutely. Right. You, Especially you when you think of the life you, cycle you, you, of a commercial you, listing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And for us, we, you know, kind of our flag and the, and what we, 
what we really want to bring to the market and to be known as is look, we understand that you get paid when you're a client, when you deliver value to your clients, we are delivering, we only get paid when we deliver value to the brokers. And we want to be focused on empowering brokers to be, to sell more assets and to just get more exposure across the market. Yep. Cool. That's all of that tea. Yeah. And so just to kind of, you know, that really is what we here at Byproxy do in a nutshell. Um, and when we talk about these reactive and active marketing terms, you know, this is the team that is really helping focus and driving those efforts and making sure that the brokers are getting their, you know, not only doing all the data analysis and finding out how to target people, but making sure that brokers are getting the maximum exposure for their listings, you know, with buyers that are actually likely to you know, transact on a property. And a fun note here is that just like with any other industry, a legacy industry, you want to bring in new fresh minds into how we can, uh, how we can really change the industry. You can't change it from the same old people who have been in it. Um, the team here comes from, comes from a variety of different backgrounds. Um, we have folks from Class Class. We have folks from Neil Patel. We have folks from Compass, Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, all different types of backgrounds that really is, is what it takes to think about this in a different way um, and, and truly start to move the needle in, in, in changing an industry. Yeah, cool. Okay. Well, is that it or you guys have any, are they on the slides, correct? Okay, yes, perfect. Yes. Well, I think, I think you guys did a great job explaining it. Um, and as I mentioned, even if you're not a commercial realtor watching this, you can definitely get benefit of what they've talked about because, you know, it is all these days about using data and get as targeted as possible on your marketing. Um, so, I just uh, want to kind of throw it back to you guys. Do you guys have any kind of, um, you know, one big thing or anything you guys want to throw out to the group um, before we call it a day? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, one big takeaway that I would get, not only just the commercial real estate industry folks that, that are on here, but all industries um, is when you are deploying capital into mm -hmm. marketing, when you are thinking about bringing a product or a service to market, Think very strategically, not about spending it, but what are you getting back for it? Correct. The most return. important thing that we think about is what is the return on every penny that I am spending, right? And how that will be returned back to me and grow my yep. business, our brand, and, and, and truly go to a market in an effective and efficient way. Absolutely. I mean, to me, it's always about a return on investment and return on time. Um, and your product that honestly mm -hmm. solves both because- having the concierge everything in one place is gigantic time saver you were talking about you don't have to go out and find 20 different solutions right. when one thing does it all so no um right. i love it um i'm open some of you guys you what's do. that what was that patrick focus in on what you do best and and let other folks handle the rest absolutely right. and and i can attest majority of people in this industry are not digital marketing specialists um you know they're trying to figure it right. out but <laughs> I always say it's, you know, if it's not your specialty or if it's just not worth your time, your time is better off building relationships and building clients than running campaigns that aren't in your wheelhouse. So, um, all right. Well, I want to thank you guys a lot for kind of joining us for this and sharing all this great information. Um, hopefully some of you guys watching this will go check them out. Again, it's by proxy and it's B-I-P-R-O-X-I. So buyproxy.com, check them out. Um, and of course, go check out their RITI site. Um, I'll throw in some perks for you guys after the webinar is over. Um, and if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat room. And if I can't answer them, I'll get them to either Nick or Patrick and make sure we get you guys your answers. All right, so thank you guys for attending today's webinar. Thank you, Nick and Patrick for sharing all this information and hopefully everyone's a great day and I'll go check out the chat room.